Hey everyone! A couple of days ago, Bob and Monet chimed in in the fracking controversy during their podcast called Siblings Rivalry. I was really surprised by what I heard because their podcast is usually one of the most entertaining and honest among the many that surround the drag race world. But in this case, most of the information was inaccurate or even misleading. I don't care why it happened, if they had a little time to research the topic or if they're simply trying to defend Rue, as many seem to believe. For me, it doesn't matter. As you know, I am quite invested in this topic and for me the priority here is just to set the record straight on the whole situation. I will leave links in the description with the sources that I will be quoting for those of you who would like to go down this rabbit hole on their own. So let's get into it. Honest, genuine thought, I think that it's actually something problematic about what's going on with it because when you sell mineral rights to your land, you actually don't have a say as to whether or not people frack. What people do in your land, you don't have a say, all right? This is the first point. The mineral rights are not sold, they are leased. This is something that's repeated over and over. Selling mineral rights to this land away. I mean, and I get and when you sell mineral rights to your land, the mineral rights were sold before they even met. This is simply wrong. RuPaul herself said that they lease the mineral rights. Actually, in that very first interview that sparkled this whole controversy. A modern ranch is really land management. Uh. You lease out the mineral rights, lease out the lease out the mineral rights, you sell water to the oil companies, and you lease out lots of land for um, for cattle people who have cattle, you know the They're things that go moo. So what is the difference between selling and leasing? Well, when you sell something, you get your check and you part with the mineral rights forever. But when you lease them, you are only allowing someone else to extract and profit from the minerals on your land. And that is for a definite amount of time. Think of it as the difference between selling a house and putting it out for rent. Why is this so important? Well, first the lease will allow you to get a cut of whatever the whole company earns instead of getting a fixed amount of money. And second, you have more control overall because when the lease expires, you have the choice to either stop the leasing and the fracking or you can sign a new one, hopefully a more lucrative one with the same company or someone else. But you, you get my point. And when you sell mineral rights to your land, you're not getting that much money for it. Actually, there is no way to know how much you can make on your lease, because that usually depends on the amount of oil that can be extracted from the land. The oil company will pay for bringing the infrastructure and operate it, but that is a fixed cost. The more oil they extract, the more easily they can recoup the fixed cost and start making a profit. Personally, I can't think of anyone in their right mind who would lease the rights for a fixed amount of cash. That's just a bad investment and that's why you hire lawyers to settle this kind of matters. But what you usually do is getting a cut of whatever is extracted from your land. Anything under 10% will make me question your sanity if you ask me. But then again, the contract is confidential, so there is really no way to tell. The problem is that Bob is stating that they are not making much as if it's a matter of fact. When you sell mineral rights to your land, you're not getting that much money for it. When in reality there is no way to know either way. They can be making a lot, they can be making very little. But judging on the new rigs waiting for approval, I would say that there is a good chance it's a reasonable amount of money. I'd say around a couple of millions a year, probably more, which is not that much when compared to the drag race money. I have a feeling that someone who, who um, is a producer on Drag Race, Drag Race Canada, Drag Race UK, Drag Race Holland, Thailand. Drag Race Spain, Fame. Drag Race Australia, and Drag Race Thailand. Um, it's probably and you have Drag Race money. and EV all these Drag Race, all these he's producing all these shows. <laughs> it's probably making more money on that stuff than on selling mineral rights to this land away. They correctly state that Rue gets a lot of checks from the franchise, but I doubt it's going to be more than I don't know about ten millions a year, something like that. The people who are fracking on the land, if there even is fracking, if there even is fracking. Frack Tracker is a non-profit organization that is well known for reporting correct information. And most of all, just go on Google Earth and take a look for yourself. That doesn't really look like cattle, does it? Fracking is the process of basically pressurizing water into the earth so that the oil will rise. Because you mm -hmm. know when you mix oil and water, the oil rises to the top. So you shoot water down oil comes up 
but sometimes oil seeps into the land as well. Uh, there's a lot of unsafe fracking in the world. There is some fracking that's actually not in, in that there is there are there are some that aren't as dangerous as others, but for the most part, fracking is a it can ruin the water supply and essentially put fuel in the water of basically everyone nearby like for miles and miles and miles. This is wrong for the most part. What Bob is actually describing is conventional drilling. In a nutshell, when you drill for oil, you are basically tapping inside a sealed chamber that contains the oil. So you inject water and the oil rises on top by buoyancy. But everything remains sealed inside this natural impermeable chamber. When you frack, the oil and gas is not contained in a chamber, but it's trapped as micro bubbles inside a layer of rock. So you use high pressure water to break the rock and free the gas and oil contained in it. The problem is that the soil and rock around the area that you're fracking is not necessarily waterproof. So the contaminated water seeps out in the water supply, carrying out contaminants with it and most notably methane gas. Not to mention water spills that can happen when the contaminated water is actually recovered. And that is why you've probably seen videos like these. Just like that. Blaming RuPaul for this fracking is problematic. It is a bunch of people blaming a black queer man for whatever, there's something problematic about blaming this black man for this system that all these white people created and are benefiting from. This is just plain wrong, and I'm frankly surprised to see Bob and Monet dismissing the whole argument as a form of racism. I have no doubt that there are some people out there that will take advantage of this to let their racist bias blossom like a rosebud on a summer day, but that's far from the source of the problem. This is not about skin color. It's about a practice that pollutes the environment. Gas leaks in the water supplies, the destruction of ecosystems, the methane emissions, only to cite a few. There is a reason why fracking is banned in so many countries, and it's not to prevent people of color to profit from it. Racism is a real issue, and it should be called out time and time again, because it's a plague that it's really hard to eradicate. But using people's suffering to bring credibility to your argument is not just wrong, it is morally corrupt. This is actually land that RuPaul's husband owned before they even met. Mm. And the mineral rights were sold before they even met. So this is oh. actually RuPaul's husband's family's land. Gag. But everyone's just saying RuPaul's fracking. This is the only thing that I agree with. The ranch belonged to RuPaul's husband for a generation and he is probably the one who signed the leases. We talked about this during the live streams already. Maybe they share everything, so Ru owns half of the ranch, half of the leases, and he owns half of her drag race money. New fracking rigs are waiting for approval, so probably new leases were signed, but maybe their marriage is not even a financial one, so everything is separated. He keeps his ranch and his fracking money, and RuPaul keeps her drag money. The problem is, she is married to this guy, so people are going to reasonably believe that like in every marriage, they share everything, especially after she herself talked about the ranch management as if it's something she is quite invested in. And I second this line of thinking for one simple reason. When a girl gets villainized on Drag Race and her life goes in shambles, what does RuPaul do? Well, looks like nothing, nothing at all. As if she's saying, the girl signed the contract, so where's the problem? She knew what she was getting into, but she signed anyway. So I'm going to go with the same line of thinking here. RuPaul knew that by associating and marrying Mr. Labar, people would blame her for the fracking. So where is the problem? She knew what could have been the consequences, but she signed up anyway. And I believe that in this instance, the saying, you get what you give, is not only relevant, but even well deserved. Most of all, Ru ignored the problem as if it never existed, probably hoping that it would just go away, which is a sound strategy, I'll give her that. 
Ru is an excellent example of a smart and ruthless businessman if you ask me. Personally, I believe that the fracking could reasonably stop here, regardless on whose name is where. They are a married couple who has been together for decades. The better part of 60 millions and counting is drag race money, and that is more than enough to support both of them without destroying the land and polluting the environment. I hope you found this video informative, and I will see you next time.